Okay, talking about comparison operator and spaceship operator in C++20 and the difference that they would make to our environment. Uh, this is what this talk is about. Uh, my name is uh, Avi Lachmish. Uh, I'm a head of development group in Incredible. Um, I consider myself as a C++ geek. I've been handling C++ uh, for the downs of days. I'm part of the ESO C++ in Israel, also uh, taking participants as part of SG15, which is the tooling uh, group for C++. Okay, and by the way, we are hiring, so if you're looking for something, then address me. Okay, so the motivation. Uh, in Herb Sutter's world, uh, this, uh, this operator was the first operator that uh, decreased the size of the standard instead of increasing it, uh, since it made the complexity of writing comparison operators much simpler in C20 than it was before. We'll see it in a sec. We will also talk about categories in the operator spaceship and uh, what do we do when we have multiple categories in the side one, one operator. We'll also see uh, operator spaceship and operator equal, equality is a special member, so they have a default uh, assignment to it. And we'll see how it behaves, how it uh, interacts with inheritance and so on. We'll understand the overload resolution, what is rewritten expressions. We'll also understand how to use it in generic code. And then we'll see some compatibility issues that we will have with the legacy code once we use uh, the new operators. Okay, so the motivation. In general, it should be much easier to write a, a, a spaceship operator. By the way, why spaceship? Because it reminded someone this one. Okay. Um, so in general, uh, writing spaceship operators should make life much simpler. We'll see in a second. Okay, and uh, and uh, it's influence about uh, operator equality as well. Okay, so let's take an example. Let's jump into the world. Do you see what's written? No, close the light. How do you close the light? Okay, so we have a class person. And uh, in the old style CPP, we had to write like six operations in order to get all the operation of the equality, right? We would have to write equality, inequality, less than, less or equal, greater than, and greater than and equal. We can see that we've used two operators, the equality operator and the less than operator to implement all the rest, okay? And of course, once we do that, we, we are able to uh, do whatever uh, type of equality that we would like to do uh, between persons. Fine. Yeah, I can try. Those two? Yeah. Try to do my best. Oh. Better? Yep. Okay. Sorry, guys. Now it's better? Okay. Cool. So, real time performance like usual. Okay. So in order to implement old style uh, comparison, we had to implement six operators, right? And to do so, uh, we uh, abused two of them in order to implement the rest. Fine. Okay, so it creates a lot of you know, uh, tedious data because it already resides when we implemented the two implementation that we had to, less than an, an equality, right? The compiler could deduce the rest, or could use the rest in order to, to imply why we are asking for, for other operations. Let's see what happens if we want more, like... Okay. 
we've used hidden friends. Do you know what hidden friend means? Someone in the audience? Hidden friends mean, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, what do you mean by is overload resolution? Instead of using overload resolution, it uses ADF, okay? It doesn't use overload resolution. What it means is, if you could see uh, on top, the full implementation is considered to be a friend. It's private to the class, okay? And it uses both right side, right side hand and left side hand. So implicit conversion from left to right or right to left are automatically deduced if your constructor implies that, if you're not writing an explicit constructor, if you're writing something that can be implicit converts into a person. So what I've used, I've created like a constructor that could get the ID, deduce the name, which is no name in this case, okay? And now you can see that I can try to do things like that. Uh, is P2 bigger than zero, or is zero bigger than P2? This is due to the capability of using hidden friends, okay? That's why you should have used a, a, a function that takes both left side and right side, and you should use that as a hidden friend because it hides everything inside your class, okay? And uses ADL instead of overload resolution. So <clears throat> this is on one hand. If you wanted to uh, use no discard, you should write it down, right? Because otherwise you could discard the, the, the return result. If you wanted to be a const expert, then you should write, write it as const expert. And if you, if you could see below, I've used the persons as a const expert person. Now the const expert is capable, capable to be const expert if and only if its members are able to be const expert, okay? There are members that cannot be const expert. And of course, I want it to be no except if possible, okay? And this is true if the operation itself doesn't throw, okay? So finally, writing everything down gets bigger. Writing the comparison on a class on, on old style C++ becomes even more boilerplates that needs to be written. Yeah. No, friends and static are two different things, okay? It, it, it is an out of class. It's not part, it doesn't get this, right? It's a friend function, but it can access its private members. That's, that's what friends means. Private friends means that hidden friends means that it is resides. It, the implementation is also implemented inside the class. If I would implement the implementation outside the class, then things would behave differently, ADL-wise, argument dependent lookup. Okay, so the operator, if we want it to be no except, that can only be if the operators, if the members themselves doesn't throw if we, we use the operation against them. It could be const expert if, it, if the members can be const expert and, at compile time. We should have defined that as a hidden friend so that we could be implicitly converted from left to right and right to left, right? Otherwise, they won't be symmetric in, in, in those cases. And we wanted it to be no discard, so we added it an attribute which is called no discard. Fine? Cool. Let's see what happens in C20 when we are trying to use operator equal. Only equal. No space here for now. Okay, so we've taken the same person and we've used uh, operator equal, okay? And we've defaulted, okay? But have a look below. We could use it as equal or unequal. The compiler understand that equality is associative and if it can compute equality, then it can compute inequality as well. Cool? 
Yeah, I can try. Big enough? You want it to be bigger? Let's try. Big enough? OK. So repeating myself, we've implemented operator equal, but we've used opera operator equal and operator unequal. And it was fine, because C++ 20 understood that a, an equality operation is an associative operation, which means that if we, can imp if we can compute equality, we can compute inequality as well. So if we have operator equality, it can compute operator inequality. And if we have, would have operator inequality, it can compute operator equal. Cool? So the operator would look for an inequality operator if we will try to use it. If it is available, fine. Otherwise, it will use operator equal, OK, and does a knot on it. And if it doesn't have that, then it would reorder the parameters in a way like hidden friend function we've used before, okay? And try to compare them. So we gain everything without doing nothing. Yeah, any question? Let's continue. The compiler will be able to do A, inequality to B, if it has one of the following function. A standing operator inequality, okay? Stand, a freestanding. A freestanding operator of equality. A freestanding operator of equality of B to A instead of A to B, if those are two different types. A member function of operator uh, inequality of A looking for B a member function of operator equality that does equality and not inequality, and then does not on that, and reordering the parameters, sorry for you not seeing it. OK, so if the compiler could find directly what you're looking for, it, it would use that. Okay, and there are priority between the, the, the operators themselves. So if it needs to reorder the parameters, the operands, those are considered to be less priority than, than, than using direct, yeah. And, and, and if you want to, if you have a good reason not to do the same in the equality and inequality, you could do so as well, okay? And you could override the decision for the compiler for a certain type if you have the reason to do so. Yeah. I'll, I'll just, I, I, I will talk about uh, overload resolution at, at the end of this chapter, OK? Having both freedom, free, a freestanding operator and a member operator saying the same will consider to be ambiguity, OK? So if you have a member the taking care of a certain operator, let's say an equal operator, and then you would have a freestanding operator that will take the same uh, operator, that this will be considered as ambiguity. Okay. Let's talk about spaceship. So, yeah, 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 yeah. I think I got the idea. So we are having a person. This person has a constructor that the same, like the, the, the first example that we saw with the, with the hidden friend that takes a, a, an implicit integer and, and convert it into a person. It has a spaceship operator, which is considered to be default. And then we can do everything that we've done with all the six operands, and we can see that we could, you know, create const expert persons, even though the operator is not written as a const expert. 
we could do equality or inequality or any ordering of less than, bigger than, bigger or equal or less than equal. And we could also use a sort which uses less than in order to sort something. Right? Everything can be done. Just a sec, I'm trying to check another thing here. Yeah. You see also the little squiggling here? Some of the compilers, okay, will shout at you or warn you that you don't uh, handle the return value, like no discard. But this is compiler, each compiler vendor does a different thing, okay? It's not compliant. But we could use the same thing as I did with the, with the hidden friend function. I can convert an integer into a person even though it's on the left side and compare it into a person. The reason for that is because of rewriting, okay? Actually what happens here is that we take the, the expression and rewrite it in other order such that it will imply one of our functions. The compiler does that for us in C++ when. Okay, so we got all the six operators like we wanted to in uh, with Spaceship. Um, all of them are considered to be no except if the member never throws when using the operators like we wanted them. We can use them in const expert if possible. At com if the, the members are, are considered to be uh, const expert in compile time. Thanks to rewriting, we could use like the same as a hidden friend. We could uh, implicit convert from left side to right side. Okay, we saw that as well. And some of the compilers are warning us when we are not handling the return value. So undiscard is, is used as well. Cool. So we have a person that has a default operator. Uh, operator spaceship handles less than, bigger than, less or equal, bigger than equal. And operator equality, equal, handles equal or inequality. Fine? But when we are defining a member spaceship operator as default, we automatically gain a default operator equal. So we get all the six operators by defining one operator. Spaceship operator does not return a Boolean. It is more like an STL compare. It returns a three-way comparison that can handle both. What, what, what does STL compare does, right? If it is Less than, it returns something less than zero. If it is equal, it returns something that is equal to zero. And if it is greater than, it returns something that is greater than zero, right? <coughs> so, spaceship operator does something like that. Not exactly that, sorry for that. We'll see in a second. <coughs> but we could call operator spaceship directly between X and Y and check if it is greater than zero, equal to zero, or less than zero. Okay? And the meaning is explained on, on the triple bit. <coughs> operator, operator spaceship does not return an integral value. It is returning something that is called category. The category, there are three categories. We will discuss them in a sec. The first one is called strong ordering. Strong ordering can return less than, greater than, or equal to. Let's consider an integer. And inte if I compare two in integers, I can be equal, that they can be equal to each other. They can be, one of them can be greater than the other, and one of them can be less than the other. So those are considered to be strong ordering. Weak ordering. Weak ordering means that, let's say, if you have two strings, and you compare them, but uh, in case sensitive. So you have hello in big letters, and you have hello in small letters, and you compare the two. 
So they consider to be equal, but the value is, the semantic value is not the same. So we are calling them less than, greater than, and equivalent. Okay, and they are considered to be weak ordering. And we have partial ordering. Partial ordering means that if we take, let's say, a double or a float, then you have nuns. Nuns are not a number. And I don't know if you know that, but if you compare something to a nun, it always is false. Okay? If you take a nun and compare it to a nun, you get back a false, because it's not a number. Okay? So it's unordered. So you could get less than, greater than, equivalent, or unordered. Cool. Stronger comparisons categories can be converted into a less stronger capabilities. Like a strong ordering could be converted into a weak ordering. But a weak ordering cannot be converted into a strong order. Semantical difference. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. So let's have a look at my type right now. So my type is a spaceship operator that returns a strong ordering, and it has a value. And if the value is the same, it should be the same, then I can return an equal. If the value is less, I can return a less, and if the value is bigger, I can return a bigger, greater. Okay? Simple example. Only in, when implementing a spaceship operator, I shouldn't say only, but mostly, when implementing a spaceship operator, only then you should use a spaceship operator directly. Otherwise, you should use less than, bigger than, stuff like that, okay? Since I'm implementing spaceship operator for my type, and I would like it to return a strong ordering, I can just go to the value, which I know that has a spaceship operator on it, and directly call it that on, on value and get back the, the, the category with the value and return that. Let's, let's look at an example. If we have int uh, x equal to 17 and y equal to 42, and then we are uh, doing x spaceship y, what does it mean? By the way, to, in, or, in order to use spaceship, you have to include a special header called compare. Okay, it doesn't come uh, without without doing it. But once you do that, all the basic types are automatically uh, getting a spaceship operator that, that, that you could use. So, x spaceship y, what does it do? What do we get back? We get back a strong ordering automatically, which means less because x is less than y. Okay, when we are comparing x spaceship 17.0, 17.0 considered to be a double, then the, the result is partial ordering, and since they are equal, the return value is equivalent, and so forth. Cool? X converted to integer in this uh, X converted to pointer. Pointer has also considered to be ha to have a, a, a spaceship operator. Line five. Line five. Line five. Yeah. What about it? Uh, X X spaceship to... seventeen, right? You, you're comparing a double to an int. So the the, the int is is yeah is uh, upcasting it to, to to a double. Then you have a double comparison. Then this, it is what it is. If X and Y has a spaceship operator between them, it is always true to say that you could equal them with partial ordering, because partial ordering is, is the less uh, category that, that you could get, right? But if they have a spaceship operator, it doesn't mean that you could call directly equal. Uh, sorry, it doesn't mean that you could directly call a strong ordering. But you could always compare them to an integral.
you shouldn't go and directly call space tube operator, as I said at the beginning. You should call less than, bigger than, stuff like that. Only when implementing operator spaceship, you, could, you should use directly spaceship operator. <coughs> if person had two types, that, two members, one of them is the, the last name and the second is the first name. Both of them are considered to be a string. And we wanted to compare two persons. So we are implementing operator uh, uh, spaceship. We take the last name, we space, the, space it with the last name of the right side value, get back a, a strong uh, ordering uh, compare. If it is equal to zero, it means that they are equal, right? If it is not equal to zero, it means that one of them is bigger than the other, and we're just returning that. Otherwise, we are returning the, the operator spaceship of the first name. Okay? Now, what happens if the person has a name and a height, and the height is double? Okay? Can we do that? The answer is no, and the reason for that is because string comparison returns strong ordering and height, which is double, returns partial ordering and therefore the deduction for auto doesn't work because we can't really know which type to return, okay? So we could write this. Fine. We could also, if we don't know the category of the type, we could also deduce it by using a, a, a type traits that, the, that is called the common comparison category, which takes the common category of both types and returns that. But what if we want to return a strong type, a strong ordering, sorry, even though it's not? We can, we can do that. If it is the same name, then return the, the, comp the, the strong uh, ordering compare. Otherwise, do a spaceship operator. We know that compare one is, is partial uh, ordering. Then check if it is unordered. If it is unordered, then just assert. Otherwise, convert the value, map the values. Cool? This is just the same. The standard has functions that exactly do that. Okay? So we have std strong order, which takes two partials and map them to the right value and, of course, set the, uh, the, the unmapped one. What would happen if I would have a person and this person would have a member which won't have a spaceship operator? What's that? The standard gives us back other functions like compare strong order fallback, which takes less than and equality operators, old style, okay, and convert them into a strong ordering. Why do I need to tell it to convert it into a strong ordering? Because the old style didn't have the category. All it had is true or false, okay? Now you have more, you have more information and the return value, okay? So I need to tell it, use the less than and the quality operator, but return back a strong ordering. I know something about you. So those are the functions and the meaning. We just went over a few of them, but you could understand the rest. Okay, so if you wanna like uh, compare and return back a weak uh, ordering, then you should uh, do compare weak ordering fallback and so on. Okay, defining and using uh, operator spaceship um, 
either as member function taking one parameter or a freestanding function taking two parameters. Both of them are right. Okay? You could use both of them. You could use a friend function as if we've used the first uh, approach. Okay? Spaceship operator can be a friend function as well. And there is a debate that there is no conclusion. Depends who you ask. If you ask Opsata, you shouldn't do that. If you ask uh, Arthur, then, then you should do that. Exactly that. And then I will show you the, why do they debate. Both operator can be default. The member function has uh, to take the second parameter as a constant value reference, but a friend function can be considered to be taken by value. The default operator for spaceship operator and, in, and equal operators, the operator automatically are no except if they can be and const expert if they can be. Okay. So, if we are defining a spaceship operators with a lot of attributes and, and others on it, it automatically applies on, automa on operator equality. So, we can see here that we've implemented as default operator spaceship and operator equality with concepts and everything, okay? It's exactly the same as if we've implemented only operator spaceship. Everything that is implied to operator spaceship automatically implies to operator equality, if and only if we are using it in a default way. So let's look at two examples. Try to. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what do we have here? So, as I said, we are using the compare include, okay? Otherwise, we couldn't use uh, the spaceship operator. And we have the base type and the derived type. And as we can see here, the, base the derived type is implementing uh, operator spaceship, and the base type doesn't have operator spaceship. It only has operator equality and operator less. And we are trying to use it, like trying to check if D1 is less than D2 and if D1 is not equal to D2. And if you could see carefully, you would see that even if I'm using uh, the default implementation for derived, I know that it has to go and actually call less than an operator equality of the base in order to answer the right question, right? So operator spaceship does that for us. Okay. Even though I've declared it as default. More than that, why do I need to void that? Yeah, no discard. It depends on the compiler. And why does D1 inequality to D2 works? Because as you could see, base doesn't have inequality. It only has equality. But still, we are in C20, and it's considered to have both, right? Let's see the other example. Why do you think? It doesn't compile, because if, I, if I'm putting this line, now it doesn't compile. Why do you think? Let me show you the, try to show you the old code. Here it is. Sorry? The derive known to use the base, right? And the base only has less than, it doesn't have spaceship. And we now define the spaceship operator in the derived as auto. So it can't really deduce the category that you're going to use. Before we said 
it is a strong ordering. So it assumes that it should return a strong ordering category. Now it can't really assume because it doesn't know anything about base. But it can do still inequality and equality. Okay? Even though derived didn't really implement nothing again that's saying something about equality or inequality. It is deduced because we have a default spaceship operator. Even though this default spaceship operator doesn't work as expected, the equality operator does. So we can do equality and inequality, but we can't really check for less than or bigger than or less than and equal and so forth. Okay, so let's talk about overload resolution. Someone asked before. So if I'm trying to check if x is equal to y, what really happens? We are looking for a member function, okay, that is saying operator inequality of x. If one exists, good. If not, we are looking for a freestanding operator that says x is not equal to y. If not, we are looking for equality operator that says a member function of x that says is x really equal to y and then not that. If not, we are looking for a freestanding operator that uh, uh, is checking if x and y are equal and not that. If not, we are calling the, the member function operator that was uh, uh, created by having a default operator spaceship, which is a different one, so it has less priority than the one before. Remember, we had one that says exactly the same, but this one was created by us. This one was auto-deduced because we have a spaceship operator that is equal to default, okay? And then if we don't have that, then we are going to call operator equal generated by uh, 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 operator spaceship, but the other way around, reordering the parameters. Cool. So overload resolution is long, and it might cost you in compile time. Or in run time. Um, using operator spaceship in generic code. So, operator spaceship in generic code needs to know a lot about the type that is trying to compare. So, like the, the, the standard gives us help with the STD less, uh, handling uh, the less operator for types that uh, need to have a less operator, uh, the, the, the standard also helps us with uh, comparing uh, spaceships and does that by providing us a function which is called compare three way, std compare three way, and this is how we uh, uh, compare a value that exists in, in a template in a generic way. Have a look and see that the result is also auto deduced which we have another uh, type trait that helps us getting the types and commonly deduce the, 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 the return value, the, the right category for, for, this, for this type. Cool. So how are we in time? Okay. Now I'm gonna show you a few compatibility issues that we have if we are going to use C++20, spaceship operator and operator equal. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so here you can see it compiles, okay, before I'm changing the font size, and once I'm turning that into C++20, you would see that it doesn't, okay? It does, just a sec. <laughs> ah, it doesn't, it returns a uh, warning, okay? And why is that? Okay. Okay, so I have my type. It has an integer value. It has a constructor which is implicit. It's not written as explicit. It gets an integer and can, and can convert it to my type. 
It has operator equal, which gets my type and check for equality on that, on that type. And we have an outstanding operator equal, which take an integer and a type and just swap the, the, the type and the integer and try to compare the other way around. Hopefully, that we are get, going to get to this operator, right? This is right for C++17, but it's not right for C++20 anymore, because C++20 is allowed to change the reorder of the types. So actually what happens when they started to, to check it, they, it was considered to be recursion, okay? And compiler later on found out about this type and, and, and just warned that we have like two options here and uh, we should be worried that, that we have uh, th those two options. Is that clear? It is, and wait with your question. Yeah, it is, but it is a bad code. It is a bad code because when you are using a, a, an operator equal between two types, you, you should have uh, something that, you know, handles both right side and left side the same way. Here you are not. You are using two functions, you know, to compare something. It, it's the wrong way to do it. You have a better way to do it. Like use a hidden friend function, like I've shown before. Let's see another one. Okay, so we have type A. It has operator int, so it can be converted into an integer. And we have operator equal that takes an A and an integer, right? And we have in, in check, we have like X and Y. And X and Y are considered to be A's. So if you're checking is A X equal to Y, you would get to operator equal and then convert y in C++17, convert y to integer, right? Because you can. And then on the next two cases, you would convert x uh, uh, into integer and, and, and you would call the three permutations that are written uh, in line five, six, and seven. Because automatically you would have operator equal between integers and operator inequality between integers, right? And you've written yourself an operator that takes an A and an integer, and then you could play with them, like, like this uh, example did, right? And, and C++17 would, in that case, would call case one on the first, on line 10, case two on line 11, and case three on line 12. But C++20, we'll call, in any case, the same option, option one. So this one changed the behavior of your code, but is it considered to be bad? It's not, because actually when you're a, a, a writing a, a operator equal, you mean that you would like to, you know, both ways, check the same, the, the same, the same function. The same function should check for, for each equality or inequality, right? It should mean the same. Okay, so these are my bonus slides. So I don't know if uh, we still have time. Do you have any questions so far? Yeah. Um, you know what, I'm going to show another bonus slide, at least one. Uh, okay, so this is a site that really what it did, it took a lot of, uh, a lot of types, okay, and um, wrote them with uh, with regular uh, comparison functions and with the hidden friend function and check the, the diff in building time, 
and he found out that, I will show you only at the conclusion, that the build time was massively uh, reduced when using a hidden friend function, okay? And I can point you to this article at the end, I will give you the slide and you could verify why, because it will take me longer to explain. But in general, the ADL, the, the hidden friend function uses the ADL and not the overload resolution. Overload resolution might take a long time in compile time and therefore it will take longer, okay? So you should, this is the debate that Help Sata has with, the, with autos, as I said at the beginning. Uh, they, are, they are claiming that a hidden friend function is not dead since uh, operator spaceship because some of it because of that. Um, I, I don't think it should imply to one time. Yep. Yeah, I've shown you the, the I can return back. This is the order of the, oh, sorry. No, I mean, have a, a new class as three members. A, a new class as? As three members. Okay. They use the default uh, space ship uh, Ah, how does it use it? One after the other, as defined. I don't know, I think so. I don't know. We can, we can check it out. I don't know. Yep. If the compiler adds code. It doesn't add code. You could, you could see the compiler explore the, 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 the assembly that was generated out of the code. Interesting question, I haven't tried. The same numbers. Yeah, I, I didn't try. Any other question? Yep. Yeah, this one. Uh, this one. Yeah, are there any uh, members of this list that are ambiguous? Yes. Present? Yes. Free and members are considered to be ambiguous. Rewriting the order are not considered to be ambiguous. They are considered to be less prioritized and therefore, you know, not used in the, those cases. Usually, if you're writing a comparison or a, a inequality or inequality of something, it's enough, but you could, as I said, the, the, this talk, you could write both, you know, if you have uh, an asymmetric operation, like equality is not really uh, the same as inequality. It's not not of equality, okay? Then you could write your own implementation for both, it will work. Yep. No, no that I know of. Why would you like to opt out? Uh, there are like, uh, you know, DSLs, like domain specific languages that mm -hmm. people have their own types and do weird things with their operators and they just... Yeah, just like I've shown here and, and the debate is that they are doing something wrong, okay? And then uh, they should do different. And we should plan for the future and not only, you know, for backup uh, compatibility and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, if that's it, then, then uh, thanks. <laughs>